Verdict time on the Bose L1 Pro 16. My Bose L1 Pro 16 purchase and the year 2020 have got two things in common. They both started out so well. What went wrong? I mean, what else could go wrong? Listen to this. One day I was in my studio and I switched the unit on. Sometime later, I was answering emails and I could hear this noise bugging me. Where does this noise come from? Searching everywhere. I located it to the column. People, once you hear this noise and you're aware of it, it drives you mad. It must be like that annoying tinnitus that people get. Honestly, I couldn't bear it. I had to turn the unit off. It's ringing and it becomes piercing and you don't even need to be near the system. You can be quite some distance away and you keep hearing that noise. It drives you absolutely bonkers. I had to turn it off. Although I'm recording this right by the column, you don't need to be near the column to hear it. This high pitched sound just resonates throughout the room you're in. It kills you. You switch it on and you hear it. You don't have to have the volume up. You switch it on and you hear it immediately. Even once you switched it off, you can still hear it in your head. It sends you crazy. This isn't the normal mains hum that you can hear through speakers or the hiss that you can hear through speakers. This is hiss from the Bose column. Back to my verdict. Let's focus on sound quality. My first uploaded sound demo, you will hear me say, oh my God. To tell you the honest truth, I hadn't listened to a PA for 11 months. And it was so refreshing to hear a loud PA. Hearing it, it sounded great. The obvious thing to do is to test the Bose against another PA. So I have my EV Vol 50, which is similar. Perfect. There I came to the conclusion that the EV Vol 50's 12 inch sub or low frequency driver outperforms the Bose. If you were standing in front of both of these PAs and you didn't look down and somebody says one has got an 18 by 10 inch driver and the other one has got a 12 inch, you would point at the EV for having the larger driver because it has got a much better low frequency performance. You would actually think that the EV has got a dedicated separate subwoofer and not a low frequency driver. And when I tested the mid high frequencies, those from the EV were cleaner, clearer, and a lot more true and expressive, also outperforming the Bose. I've come to the conclusion that the Bose is a very MIDI performer. It sounds like a large full range speaker, not really delving too deep into the high frequencies and not really delving into the low frequencies. I hate to say it, no highs, no lows, you know the rest. It's MIDI performance gives it good throw, so it punches through. That is where its strengths are when it comes to sound quality. And I can see its appeal. And when it comes to power, the Pro 16 has enough power. It's not short of that. The Bose has 124 dB compared to the EV's 127. Watts, the Bose has 1,250 and the EV has 1,000. You're not gonna tell the difference. Ease of use. All the level controls are easy enough to use. It lights up your selections and the levels around the dials. Bluetooth connects easy. You've got the presets. So it's simple to use. It's lightweight compared to similar PAs. When I talk about ease of use, immediately again, I'm comparing it to the EV Vol 50. That is so simple to set up and so simple to take down. DJs especially will tell you the worst part of the night is packing up. In an instant, once you've disconnected the power, it's packed away. And it's so easy to set up that you feel the need to call everybody over saying, watch this, and to get an audience around just to show them how quick you can set up and pack away. Three pieces, two clicks, one system. Remember that? I've said it once and I'll say it again. It's a struggle to separate the column parts, even from removing the column from the subwoofer. It's a lot of wiggling around, side to side, tugging. And once you've removed the column, it is a struggle to separate the column parts. Nothing to hold on to. It's quite embarrassing trying to split the column parts. 
I can only imagine eventually one of the collar mens is going to be damaged because of the amount of force you're putting on it or you're going to drop one of the parts. Build quality. The low frequency driver is sturdy enough. It's built well, solid. The plastic looks like it's difficult to mark. Nice and sleek looking. The grill looks good. Nice and firm. The section of column with the drivers in is nice and tough. Looks quite cutting edge. But it's a shame that all of this is let down by a weak link, which I won't go into. Value for money. I think it's overpriced. I struggle to see my 1,799. Looking further than the 16 driver column part, I don't see it. Again, comparing to others. No latches on the XLRs. Give me a nice Speedcon connection. A nice little LCD DSP that I can play with and make some real fine adjustments to suit how I want it to sound rather than bass, treble and tone match app. I think apps are a cop out. Apps are free. I want something else there on that unit to play with. If I compare the bags, the EV bag has got nice compartments either side for cables. It's got compartments with flaps. I know there's a space on the Bose bag, but it's just a space. Even that profile piece of foam to make sure things are snug. EV bag has carry handles and a shoulder strap. So you can free up another hand. You might need to open a door or steady yourself or even answer your mobile. Pick your nose, wipe sweat off your brow. You're carrying your nice Bose system. And let's say you want to show off. You have to be careful which way around you carry the bag because it's only got Bose written on one side. If you're carrying your EV PA, you've got EV written on both sides of the bag. Come on Bose, what you mean you saved money on stitching? So you've only stitched Bose on one side of the bag. Those plastic signal connections in the Bose, they look like something that you get off a printed circuit board. Where's the money? There's nothing wrong with being cheap, but you have to give the customer something else. This is one of my RCF Hasty M45s. I've got four of these, very plasticky build. But the sound that comes from these speakers, I can't even find the word. Outstanding, breathtaking, phenomenal. This, seriously, first time I heard it, I was speechless. These speakers sound crazy. This is the kind of speaker you do not demo. If, you'd have, if you have to demo it, that's disrespectful. This is the kind of speaker you put in your basket, you go to the checkout and you pay for it because you need to prepare yourself when you hear it. This speaker is not cheap in price, but I think it might be quite cheap in construction. But when you listen to the sound, it should be more expensive than it is. The power, the experience, second to none when it comes to sound quality. And look, they've even thrown you DSP to play with. And this speaker is so cheap, it doesn't even have an on-off power switch. You know why? It's so good, it doesn't need one. This is what I'm talking about. Give me something else for that money. Look at the DB. The ES1203 is one mono system. You can split it into a stereo system. The EV, one of the quickest PAs, I think, to set up and take down. Got a nice little DSP to play with. Build quality is rock solid. Don't get me started. There's nothing unique about the Bose. Would I buy the Pro 32? For DJ purposes, no. Simply because this PA will be on the floor. From the ground to about waist to chest height, I would have maybe 16 to 20 drivers. And considering that I'd have this PA close to the booth, which is where people will be dancing on the dance floor, many people are gonna block out the sound from two thirds of that column. And there'll only be a few drivers above people's heads. So this will be no good to me. I know it might have 180 degrees coverage, but with people dancing on the dance floor straight in front of the column, it's going to block the sound out for many. This might be ideal for live performers who have an audience, and the audience is quite far away from the performer, so you can get that even coverage from people who are seated or standing. What's very interesting is those who aren't too happy with the issues of the Pro 16 are saying, I'm going to order the Pro 32, or I can't wait for the Pro 32 to come out. 2,799. People are willing to spend a thousand more just to get a Bose. It's got 128 dB peak and a sub more or less with the same performance of the Pro 16 for 2,799. I want two subs and I want a PA system that can at least deliver 136 dB peak. Only 128. I think it's quite laughable. 
Obviously, bows are loving this. Wow. Obviously, all of this is just my opinion. If you yourself love this PA, yeah, go out and buy one. Enjoy it. The question is, do I recommend it? Thank you for watching.